world, the Republic of the Congo, I should say the Democratic Republic of the Congo. She's written extensively about it, produced a film about it, and her work has now been honored by the United Nations. Emily Troutman has recently been named one of the United Nations Citizens Ambassadors. Emily, congratulations on the award. Thanks Thank for coming you so in. Much. Thank you. Uh, what does it mean to be a Citizen Ambassador to the United Nations? Well, actually, this is the first time that the United Nations has ever done this. What they did was held a um, video contest on YouTube and asked people to create a video with their message to world leaders. Um, so it said if you could speak to world leaders, what would you say? So uh, there was five winners out of about four or five hundred videos from around the world. Um, I'm the only American, but they, they represented sort of everywhere. And, mm -hmm. and we're the first time they've ever done this. So, you know, they, they're really still not, not sure yet, you know, exactly what we'll be doing, except that we're going to be working in terms of citizen engagement. Well, they played, and, and you played right into your strength. You are a filmmaker, a right. photographer, a writer, and so the, the documentary that you produce is uh, very effective, very, very effective. Indeed, they recognize that. What would you like to do with this recognition? Well, I think, you know, photography and online media is an incredibly powerful tool, and I love that the United Nations and Ban Ki-moon is really... Um, embracing that. We had the opportunity to meet uh, the Secretary General on Friday and he was incredibly encouraging in terms of wanting the five of us to embrace digital media mm -hmm. to engage people on these issues. So I'd like to continue the campaign that I started through my video which is to consider people one person at a time. Mm -hmm. um, my message was that uh, world leaders could really do more to carefully consider their their global constituents. Mm. You, I, I mentioned off the top here that the uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo is the single most war-torn country on planet Earth. Uh, more people have died in wars there over the last couple of decades than at any time in any war since World War II, which is an astounding figure because a lot of this happens uh, off the radar screen of, of Western media. You went to that country for six weeks or so. Uh, it's a place where, where photography, your profession, is very, very strictly uh, outlawed in some cases. How did you get around that? What were your perceptions of the country? Well, I, I was working um, in, in cooperation with the United Nations. They, they uh, like to help uh, artists and, and journalists if they can. So when I was traveling, I was usually traveling with United Nations escorts. Um, my Im impressions of the country, it's, it's an incredibly difficult um, it's an incredibly difficult situation there, but I think that the people have a lot of strength and integrity, and um, I think that they're, you know, with the help of the United Nations peacekeepers, hopefully going to be able to find a solution, but it is, it is incredibly tragic. I mean, the, the way that people are living there, um, you know, the, the UN has the largest peacekeeping force in the world there right now, 17,000 soldiers, and they've just restarted a war with the FDLR. And this is this is the rebel group that's which is coming in group. from surrounding countries, right? That's to right. It's sort of an extension of um, the war in Rwanda. Everybody remembers the genocide there, and and so they have these um, rebels out in the mountains, about 6,000 of them, they think, and then a lot of also uh, other militias in there. So it's it's a tough war to fight you know it's jungle and that that is an impression that I won't forget how just how opaque those forests are mm -hmm. I mean it's a place where you can hide and they also have a real tremendous amount of um, natural resources they have 80 percent of the world's resources of coltan which is an essential um, ingredient used in all electronic devices including cell phones computers digital cameras so, so who controls that resource controls tremendous wealth it's it's tremendous. I mean, we all remember Blood Diamonds. You know that that really got a lot of headway in the media the last couple of years. Now we're talking about blood electronic devices. So mm -hmm. right now there is a, a bill in the Senate um, to to help control coltan. I think it's uh, S eighty one mm -hmm. or eight nine one. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, but those things it's it's really hard to get traction because there there isn't a lot of transparency. People think DRC, you know, Congo, what is it? It's so far away. They can't really connect with it. That's why this thing that the United Nations is doing, YouTube, photography, it's an incredible way for people to to make it matter to them, to look in the eyes of somebody who is Congolese and, and look at them and you know see well, they're, they're sort of just like me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm curious what your thoughts are about uh, the, the extent 
uh, of the problems, the systemic problems in this civil war here. Even the United Nations itself has been uh, condemned in some respects for its involvement in the civil war. There was allegations a few years back, more, more than allegations, uh, documented instances where, where UN peacekeepers were involved in the systema uh, systematic rape of, of civilian populations. Um, what's your perspective on that? Yeah, I don't think that those, that those um, accusations came out of Congo. Um, but, you know, the mistakes happen, and it's interesting that we were there on, on Friday celebrating um, peacekeepers. We, we were there to celebrate peacekeepers, and it was really interesting to hear what they had to say. I got to, to hear the um, director of peacekeeping operations speak, and also um, director Terry George, who, who directed the film Hotel Rwanda. And, you know, there's such opposing viewpoints in terms of whether or not UN peacekeepers should even exist, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I can say from my own personal experience that there were certainly times where I felt safer because I was traveling in a convoy. And there are definitely places where people can't go because, um, you know, of the, the security situation, the UN helps them move. I, I think. I think it's a troubling problem. I think that um, that the UN really needs to ask itself whether or not um, it's better to have these peacekeepers trying to uh, wage a war, or whether that war is going to displace more people and cause more humanitarian mm -hmm. pain. Because of course, since they've rein, uh, reinvigorated this uh, battle, more people have been displaced, and when they're displaced, mm -hmm. they're at risk. So it's a it's a tremendous problem. It's hard to know how to handle it. I think the United Nations is still really just um, trying to cooperate mm -hmm. with the the Congolese government in terms of hopefully getting those six thousand uh, soldiers out. But again, this thing comes back to economic resources mm -hmm. and the world's resources. If we can't control the way in which we traffic resources like coltan, gold, copper, tin, uh, diamonds, there's always going to be somebody who uh, can benefit from insecurity. Right. And, and that, that's really what's going on here. A lot of people perceive this as an ethnic war. And I, I think, you know, that's the hi history here. The, 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 Hutus, the Hutus and the Tutsi right. tribes were at war in that same country. I mean, that's certainly the history. But I think now it's become really a war over resources, a gang fought war, uh, where so many militias are sort of just staking out their claims mm -hmm. in, in what the country has. So as for your question about whether or not the United Nations peacekeepers will be able to um, to affect change and whether or not they're cooperating, you know, I, I, think, I think the United Nations is doing um, all that it can right now. And I think... I think for the moment, they really need to wait and, and see, see what happens. Emily Troutman, uh, uh